What's up Dragon Nation? I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Space Engineers. This episode, we need to start working with the turret control block. I need to build some turrets so that way we can go after some of the facilities that do have active turrets. And we need a crane so that way we can go ahead and start salvaging some items. But yeah as you can see i already built it we might go into creative so that way we can test a few things out let's go ahead and get this started so last episode we were working on the dragon wagon we were trying to get it built and we also built a base as you can see, I did a redesign just a little bit and the dragon wagon is finished, complete with grain. So I spent, I spent a couple of hours trying to figure out this crane system. That's why I went ahead and built it and it, it kind of works okay. I should have done it in creative to be honest with you, but we're going to go over that here pretty soon and I'll tell you how I exactly built it. Then we have some turrets on the jeeps and I try to make it as compact as possible. There's a few things that we do need to talk about with that. So the system does actually work out pretty well. Let me go ahead and power this one up. And if you set it up correctly, all you have to do is, I think two, yeah, hit two. That's where I have it in my control bar. And you can control the turret, which is kind of cool. And then it doesn't shoot. <laughs> Do I have ammo in it? I should have ammo in it. Maybe this isn't the one that I put the... Yeah, I did put the ammo in. Okay, you know what happens? Every, sing every single time when you log out and log back in, the control system gets messed up. So what I gotta do is go to a Gatlin and add those tools. So that way we can actually function them. There we go. So the movement is a little bit wonky. It's not that bad though. For space engineers, it's pretty damn good. I kind of like it. The one, the one that uh, is, is kind of iffy would be the crane. This thing, oh, this right here is the helm. I just have it here temporarily just while I uh, was trying to get everything set up. Now the issue that you will have is when you turn off the power to the dragon wagon. Let me go ahead and turn it back on. Everything kind of messes up a little bit. Just a little. Let me get this back into a start position. There we go. Yeah, this being in multiplayer, the whole thing is kind of clangy. <laughs> you all want to be a little bit careful. Okay, okay, come on. Alright, then what I gotta do is I gotta go through another control and straighten out that hinge. There we go. I need to figure out a way to lock this so it doesn't move. Okay, no, no. Stop screwing up. Alright, so that is the uh, traveling setup. Whenever I need to travel around, I'll have it locked like that. But it's probably not a good idea because as you can see, stuff is starting to freak out. Because, yeah, the, the collisions are... I thought they fixed collisions in the Space Engineers, but apparently not. <laughs> oh. uh, but yeah, this is actually pretty simple. Basically what you do, or the way that I have this set up, what you do is first we need to straighten it out. So... I need to control... Oh, shit. So yeah, in tool, on my toolbar, in number one, I have the hinge, which will straighten out the pillar. And then I have to go into the turret control, the first one, yeah, <laughs> to control the other hinge. So that way I can get it set up like this. Then what I do, since I have more hinges set up, I could go into three, which is that hinge. And then go out, go out of that one, go into four, which is uh, the tip, the magnetic. Okay, turn, and then up and down. Okay, turning the mouse, difficult. Maybe WASD would be a little bit better, but we're okay. We got it. 
All right, so there is my crane. And then, of course, I have pistons set up on the toolbar. And this thing stretches out <laughs> pretty freaking far. So we go nine. But if I get out and go to, what was it, two? If we can get this without breaking anything. As, oh, as you can see, the crane goes all the way to the cabin. So anything that I want to store on this flatbed, I can reach. With a little bit of practice. I, I definitely need to practice this thing. So when I store it away, probably the best way to store this thing, instead of... Because what I would do, let me see if I could do this without breaking anything. I need to straighten out... Hey, turn. Okay, I need to straighten out that one. There we go. Uh, then I need to go one. No, not one. Not one. Two. Straighten out this one. Oh, it's a little janky, but it's okay. It's okay. I think it will work fine. Maybe. All right, then we hit one to go ahead and lock it back away. And then also bring back in the pistons. So, in a perfect... Oh, shit. In a perfect world, this would be how... Oh. This is how I would control the crane. But, yeah, this is Space Engineer. It's not too perfect. Now, the other problem that you'll get, eventually I do need to turn uh, the drag wagon off so that way I'm not wasting battery power. Watch this. <laughs> this this one's fun. Oh, is it not going to do it now? Oh, you know why? All right, here we go. You ready for it? There it goes. Yep, that's what happens whenever I turn off the power on the dragon wagon. Uh, so yeah, storing it the way that I want is probably not a good idea. But it works for the most part and it's still freaking out uh yeah so yeah i'm, I'm working on it i'm working on it all right oh when the engines are on i need to shut those off Actually, they weren't even on. I had no power to the dragon wagon, but the sound was on. But yeah, none of the engines were. Well, space engineers. <laughs> Alright, so what we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into creative because I just, I cannot build this again. It was a pain in the ass just a little bit. I mean, it's my first crane, so of course it was a pain in the ass trying to figure it out. But... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and go into a creative world, so that way we can go ahead and get something set up. And I can show you really quick the whole setup and how to use the turret control blocks. Alright, so the old way of having custom turret controls was setting everything up with gyroscopes, which was very wonky and it didn't work very well in planet gravity. Uh, if you wanted to use it, it had to be in space. I mean, you could use it in Planet Gravity, but it was a pain in the ass. Just like everything in Space Engineers. So, the first thing I had to figure out was... Well, do I have one? I don't think I have a blueprint. I might have saved it. Uh, blueprint for the Jeep. As you can see, I've been saving all the blueprints that I can. Yes, we do. Alright, so this right here, this is... Let me rotate it and drop it. This right here is the Jeep. Now, one thing I would like to keep, I got cables in the way. Uh, one thing I would like to keep is the overall design. So we have the storage containers here on the side, which we could use to hold a little bit of extra ammo, but we still need to connect it to our turret and the weapons. So the first thing I had to figure out was the best way to connect all these cargo containers together and still leave room for uh, the turret for the rotors and the hinges. So all I did, let's see if I can actually do this. Uh, if you take a look at the back, the uh, back of the <laughs> the Jeep, 
is a 3x3, three three. and then, of course, the cargo containers are the 4. So, all I did to get that set up was I started with a conveyor junction. Now, I, because of this, I had to rebuild the entire Jeep completely. I had to grind down the old one and rebuild the new one from scratch. So all I did was one, two, and three. That is our three by three for the back. Then I came up with conveyors, leaving room open for the rotors that are gonna go right there. Now, it might cause a little bit of an issue, but I think we'll be fine. And then of course we need the three by three. So that way we can connect to the cargo container. So if we grab a one by one, just like that, and right there. So that is the back of our Jeep, or at least part of it. Now of course there's still wheels, I think I put some batteries in there for a little bit more power, because I did have to get rid of a few batteries to change some things up, I can't remember. I think it was those batteries right there. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, I got a f I put batteries there so that way I could get rid of some others somewhere else. All right. Now, in order to get this working, what we're going to need is we need a way of passing the uh, ammo from the storage containers, the one by ones, up to the turret. So for that, we're going to be using an advanced rotor, which luckily. <laughs> on a small grid is a one by one. It's perfect. And it just sticks up enough so that way the rotor head, if I could get up a little bit, just a little, it's just, it sticks up just enough so that rotor head is not interfering with conveyor junctions. Now, of course, this is space engineer, so it looks like it doesn't interfere, but it probably does. So one thing you probably want to do if you're doing a system like this and you're trying to hide the rotor, is to take the rotor Fuel critical yeah i'm in creative shut up is <laughs> to take the rotor and we could do a rotor displacement and raise it up a little bit if we need to actually pretty damn high if we need to all right then the next thing we need f in order to control this as a custom turret we're going to need ourselves a hinge that is going to be our vertical control so the rotor is the horizontal control, the hinge is the vertical. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. That's the, that's the hinge part. So a hinge. I think it's this one right here. Alright, then we need to rotate the right way. One thing I did learn was you could tell which way is the front and which way is the back by... Uh, those little two ticks right there are the back of the hinge. We actually have it turned wrong. Hold on. I need to turn it that way. That's the front and the back of the vehicle. Probably don't really need to, but it's just the OCD in me. There we go. Alright, so now we have a system to actually control the turret. What we need to do now is we need to put on the weapons. And there's a way of doing that that is... A little bit easier and a little bit more functional so what I could do is can you just place thank you what I can do is I just put a conveyor junction right there and connect the weapons to that so if we grab a Gatling uh, right here now we could use just about any weapon that we want but for the size that we have for the Jeep the Gatling is probably the best thing but, if you take a look, it does poke out a little bit forwards. So the center of the turret would be about right there. And then the Gatling turret would actually come over the cockpits, which might cause some issues. So I would want to go ahead and back that up just a little bit. Just to make sure we have the smallest profile possible so it creates less of a problem. So we'll put another conveyor junction there, and then put the Gatling guns back a little bit. Then there's another issue. 
One thing you could put on this turret is you could put a camera, so that way you can see what you're aiming at. It actually makes it a whole lot easier when you're trying to fight. But one thing you need to keep in mind, let's go ahead and grab this. If we put a camera in this position, the problem that we're going to have is the breach of the barrels of the, the two Gatling guns are in front of the camera. The reason that is bad is because of muzzle flash. What happens is every time you fire a round, it creates a flash in front of the muzzles, which will blind you if you're looking through the camera, especially at night. You won't be able to see what you're shooting at. It's kind of a pain in the ass, especially when you're full auto. Now, if you were using a single shot weapon, you would be okay because you could shoot, then reaffirm your target, and then shoot again but full auto it's just a blinding light in front of your face all the time so what you want to do is you want to put the camera in front of the muzzle breech so we're gonna go one more forward and that actually that could just be a regular block to be honest with you and then we'll go ahead and put in the camera so there will still be a muzzle flash but it will not be as bad because the camera is in front of the muzzle. Or at least I hope. I haven't tested it out yet. We still have to work that out. But I think it will work. Alright, then the next thing we're going to need... I got to remember how to do creative. I think it's Shift F10? Yeah, there we go. God, oh, these are the tracer ammo. Hmm, I don't think I can make those yet. I need to learn the blueprints of them. Uh, we need... Let's go ahead and go with... Got red, orange, green, or blue. Okay, let's go... Let's go to Star Wars, man, and go with blue. We'll go ahead and get 100 D1 rounds. Critical. Inventory full. Well, that was quick. Uh, go ahead and put it in the storage container. And now, it should automatically feed it into... Okay, maybe it doesn't. Maybe that's not the right type of ammo. Does it take it? There's only one way to find out. Let's put it in the actual weapon. Well, it's taken it, but it didn't feed. Everything's built. That is an advanced. It works. I guarantee you because I've already shown it. I've already tested it out in uh, on our server. But that's okay. All right, so now that we got some ammo, let's go ahead and set up the actual control. So for this, what I did was we have a couple of blocks right here that are just armor blocks, and I thought it would be kind of cool to go ahead and put the uh, turret control right there. And it actually doesn't look half bad. But yeah, we're not going to actually build it, so I'm just going to put it here for right now. So if we go to control... Turret control, and we're just going to put it right there for right now. Then let's also go ahead and get a cockpit so that way we can get everything set up and access the control panel of this vehicle. Right there. Oh, it's interfering. Hold on, let me move it forward a little bit. Uh, is it? I think it's right there. Is about the same size as the Jeep would be. All right, now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get the turret control set up. For that, we go turret control. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to select what is the horizontal spin and what is the vertical spin. So the horizontal spin is the rotor. That's gonna go in the assign azimuth rotor so that's going to be the advanced rotor uh, then we need to assign the elevation which is the vertical rotation which is going to be the hinge there we go then we assign the camera and then what we need to do is go ahead and assign the tools that we're using so the cool thing about this is you don't have to use it as a weapon turret. You could also use it as a production turret with welders and grinders, which 
is awesome. It really is. But if we have the tool... Now, I did test it out, and this does not work with magnetic pads or landing gear. It only works with, like, functional items, like weapons or tools. But, with all that set up, I think that's it. That's all we need to do, right? I think so. But now what we need to do is, while we're in our vehicle cockpit, we need to set up the toolbar. We're going to go with the custom turret control. I, in mine, I put it in number two because I have the wheel brakes in number one. And then we just go down here to control. So, if we hit two, we are now able to control that turret. And, of course, it works a lot better in single player than it does in multiplayer. Obviously. Alright, so one thing I did learn. Let's go ahead. There it is. And it's pretty damn accurate, too. At a distance, that's actually pretty good. And it's also kind of cool that there's not a whole lot of shake. It's awesome. Uh, one thing I did learn is if you rotate towards the front and you try to pan down, there's another cockpit on this side. If you try to pan down, you won't be able to go down. You'll be able to go down like that far, and that's about it. So one thing I did learn, if you're going to attack somebody, uh, either a person or a base, the turret's on a base, aim your turret towards the back of the vehicle. Fuel critical. And then just back in. That way you have a further, or you have more range of targeting. Yeah, because the uh, cockpits will be in the way just a little bit. So that is a turret system. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get a crane system set up. Alright, so I got everything deleted. Let's go ahead and try this, see if I can get this working the first time. So first we're going to start with a rotor, which is... Let me actually spawn in a dragon wagon. Uh, where is... There we go. Let's spawn this one in. I have so many copies. I need to get rid of some stuff. I have way too much. Way too many blueprints. Alright, so right now I'm going to show you a picture of an actual Hemet. A real life Hemet. And if you notice, the crane is on the back. If you, if I pick the right photo. <laughs> we'll have to see. I'll try to make sure that I do. But what the crane does is it starts in the middle. It has a rotor. And it's an actual rotor. Uh, in the middle, then what it does is it has a hinge that straightens out the boom, and then it has another hinge in the back, and then it has pistons which will extend. Well, they're not actually pistons, but for the sake of space engineers, we're calling them pistons. Then what it has is it has a winch. Let me go ahead and build this. It'll be easier to demonstrate if I could get it built easily. So hinge... And another thing I could do is go ahead and set this up with an advanced rotor if I want to pass resources through it. Which I kind of wish I would have done now. Uh, it's too late now. Alright, so we got our hinge. So this hinge right here is not a control hinge. What I use it for is just to straighten out the boom. What I mean by the boom is just the arm that the whole turret or the whole crane sits on. Then what I need to do is I need to turn... I need to control. Hold on. I need to be able to control this thing. There we go. I should have left the hinge. Oh well. Alright, we still got... Yeah, I still got the power there. So we come here, we find that hinge. I need to rotate it 90 degrees. The reason is, is I'm trying to get all the spacing and everything set up. So we'll set the velocity for 1. Nope, that's the wrong way. Other way. Uh, hinge. Reverse. Alright, there we go. So the boom, the length of the boom is going to be from the center to right about here, this block here. Let me go ahead and paint this. So that is just going to be armor blocks to that point. Then we're going to have two hinges right here. 
going back the other way. So that way I could go ahead and uh, fold the whole system down when we're in transport. Now, in reality, it's a good way of doing it. It's actually a pretty cool system, but in Space Engineers, not the greatest. Now, I can't remember the actual length, but we'll just simulate it. Oh, can I? Damn it. Come on. I know I can place you. I've done it. We'll just say about there. Is that right? Let me actually count it. All right, so that would be the hinge. So one, two, three, four, five. So hinge and one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm one too far. All right, then what we need is we need the whole thing to ro rotate back on itself. So it creates kind of like an S when it folds away. So hinge. This one right here, this hinge, is just another hinge for straightening out the boom, which will not actually move. The problem is I could lock that hinge, but what happens, I don't even know what happens. For some reason, the hinge will not actually lock. What I need it at is a... Which one is it? I think it's a darker one. I guess we're about to find out. Oh, no, that's not it. It's this one. I can tell by what, by what degree they're at. Fuel critical. So I need this one to go velocity one. Okay, it's going the right way. Then what we'll have is we'll have another hinge, which will be a control hinge. A hinge for actually controlling uh, the crane itself. Then what I needed was I needed a way of putting items onto the flatbed from back here all the way to the front of the flatbed. Also, I probably need to extend it if something is a little bit further away from the dragon wagon. So for that, what I did was I got three pistons. And three pistons seem to be the right size for not only putting, for the length when we hot. Okay, can you bring green? There we go. Not only for the length of when we hide it away, but also the length for reaching the front of the cab. And then what we need is to fold that, but not right now. Uh, what we need is an elbow. I need a way of bending the whole thing so I have a little bit easier control. So what I did was I just added a hinge right here. So. Yep, like that. And <laughs> I needed a little bit more control or a little bit more length, so I went ahead and added a another piston. Which we're gonna place right there. And then of course we have our magnetic pad which actually picks the items up. But I needed to have decent control so that way if I need to uh, twist or bend an item to get it on the flatbed flat. I needed a rotor and a hinge in order to control it. Just so I could get those fine maneuvers and get it exactly where I wanted it. And then of course after that we have ourselves the magnetic pad, I think it's called. Here we go. Alright, rotate you down. Oh, come on, man. Uh, I, love, I love space engineers. I love it so much. Can you just place... There you go. Oh, I love it so much. So that right there is the crane. Now here's what I need. This hinge right here is the straightening hinge. All it does is we'll have it in toolbar 1 and it will just rotate so that this boom arm just goes vertical and that will be our operating position. This rotor right here and that hinge right there are the first control, uh, the first turret control. So that's a one turret control and then this hinge up here will be another 
uh, control. That will be a separate one, so that's two turret controls. And then, of course, this rotor and that hinge will be another turret control. So all together, I need three turret controls to make this crane work. And, of course, when I come back in, it's dark. Why the hell not? So what I want to do, since I am an admin, uh, I have to do a cleanup every once in a while. So I can go into creative to be able to do that. Uh, there is a lot of stuff to clean up on the server. Let's actually, let me just show you real quick. I, I tested this out last night and looked through some of the grids. I mean, look at this list. This is stuff that people are not grinding down. So these are bases that they're finding and they're just taking what they need and they're leaving everything else. So what I have to do is I have to go through and clean all of this up. That's why it's important to name your vehicles. So that way I could just go down to uh, say static grids and just delete the grids which will save me a lot of time. But unfortunately not everybody is naming, it's not naming their vehicles and bases like they should be. So if I just delete a static grid, I might delete someone's base. But, I mean, it's in the rules. So if they don't, it, it's on them. Alright, so what I want to do, since we're in creative, I want to go ahead and grab something heavy. I know that batteries are pretty heavy because we use them to turn vehicles back over. So grab a battery, and we'll make sure it's not in the ground. Uh, right there. And we'll see if this crane can actually pick the damn thing up. So, we'll get in the helm. The helm is not going to be here forever. Uh, it's just for right now so I can get everything set up. We need to turn everything on. Alright, let me, let me try to straighten this out. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. You're good. You're good. You're fine. Everything's okay. All right, let me go three. Try to straighten, ah, straighten, shit. Uh, yeah, this is why it's a, probably locking this thing away is not a good idea. All right, let's, there we go. I got it, I got it. Please stop bouncing. You're scaring the shit out of me. All right, so going to three. Okay, stop, please, please. All right, let's straighten that one out. There we go, we got it. And then go back to this one. So when the vehicle is traveling, this is what I would like it to look like. Whenever we're going from one location to another, I would like it to hide away like this. But obviously, not a good idea. So the first thing we would do to make the crane move is we have that hinge, which just straightens out the boom. Uh, wrong one. It's one. And they go into two, so that way we can straighten out that one. Then when the boom is vertical, and you can see that that hinge at the top is not moving. It's still at 90 degrees. So now what we need to do is we need to line up to the battery. There we go. Uh, it looks like we do need to let out a hinge or a piston. Uh, so I have all the pistons set up in the toolbar, so that way I can move just a little bit at a time. <laughs> it's a little bit wonky. Alright, so now what I need to do is I need to control that hinge in the middle. Which is set up in toolbar 3. We're just going to go ahead and go straight down with it, like that. All right, let's go ahead and straighten out that magnetic pad too. So we, for that, we need to go to four. And rotate. Like that. All right, it looks like we need a little bit more length. So we'll go ahead and go seven for another piston. Nope, eight for another piston. That should do it. All right, now we'll go ahead and go uh, F. We need to control number three. Oh no, two. There we go. All right, bring it down to where it's level about, okay. 
Okay. You're fine. You're fine. Alright, now three so we can straighten out that arm. Alright, I think right there should be perfect. Go back to two, drop it down. Uh, and then the pad is set up on number five. I think we got it. All right, F, uh, go to two. But, oh, it does pick it up. So it is strong enough to pick up heavy items. One at a time, grant you, if I try to pick up anything heavier, the whole thing would probably collapse on me. But we can get it over here. All right, it looks like, let's go up. Uh, let's go into number three. Bend, bend. No, other way. Okay. We're fine. Go to two. And right. Right there. Hit five. Now, with a little bit more practice, I could get this perfectly. But when I stow away the crane when we're moving around or we're driving, probably leaving the crane like this would be a better idea. Uh, maybe actually locking it. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> actually locking it to the flatbed. Oh, no, wrong way. Like that. Just to get some stability so the whole thing doesn't flap around when we're trying to move. And then, when I power the thing down... Oh, wrong one. Hold on. Alright, now why? The crane doesn't flap around like it used to. It is still wanting to, but it doesn't. So yeah, that's a crane system. For the most part. I mean, it's not the greatest thing. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the battery. So yeah, but uh, that's annoying. So right now the the dragon wagon is turned off. You can tell because those buttons have no power, but it still sounds like the engines are on, but they're not. There we go. Little bit annoying. So anytime I shut the vehicle down, if I don't want that sound, I have to. Turn them back on and turn them back off. So yeah, don't control the uh, engines with Y. To turn them on, turn them off. So yeah, that is the crane and the turret for the Jeep. And as you can see, here's our turret. It actually works pretty well. I do know. Let's try this again. Uh, I don't think it's going to matter because there's already a round in there. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of ammo, so I do have to be sparing. Which means here in the next episode, we could go ahead and go to some of the facilities that have active turrets. And we could test this out. Now, I can't remember the range of the turrets, or... Yeah, I can't remember how far we need to be so they don't shoot at it. I think it's 600 meters. It's either 800 or 600. I can't remember. So that way, enemy turrets can't hit us, but we can still hit them. Kind of try to snipe them from afar. We'll see how that works out. So we would go out with the jeeps, we would attack some turrets, get rid of all the defensive turrets, and then we would grab the dragon wagon, bring it into salvage. So what I need to do is probably put a couple of cargo containers on this thing. Uh, it is big enough, we can go ahead and put some large cargo containers on it. I think I'll start with two. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Uh, I think I do have the blueprints for large cargo containers. Oh, and the whole setup. Oh yeah, I don't have jetpacks. So one thing that is important, let me go into places so we can get up here, I can show you real quick. Uh, one thing you do want to do is you want to go ahead and make sure that there is clearance for all your rotors. So I went ahead and did this little divot, so that way we're not interfering with that hinge or that rotor. You can see one of the uh, turret controls is right there. The other two are here and there. Then of course I have a hitch right here for a trailer. 
Now, I don't like using the rotors and the rotor heads because, yeah, clang. <laughs> but, oh, connection problem. I think I just lost connection. Well, yeah, I went ahead and made a divot in that also, so that way when I put the hinges in for the trailer hitch, it doesn't interfere. Will I get connection back? Are we going to lose some progress? I have no idea. So, yeah, multiplayer. Uh, next episode, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and attack some facilities, try to get some new blueprints that we don't have yet. And I'm also going to move off on my own. But yeah, we'll talk about all that next episode. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.